I'm Evelyn Rusley with TechCrunch TV backstage at Disrupt with Bill Gurley, and he's a partner at Benchmark Capital. Thanks so much for joining us. No problem. You were just on a panel called to IPO or not IPO, and we were able to chat a little bit backstage, and you said one of the things you wish you got a chance to expound on was kind of the criteria for a company to kind of look at and decide whether or not they're eligible for yeah. an IPO. I think, I think that there's a sentiment in the valley that almost any company can go public and I, I looked up some stats on the NCA website just as a proxy you know one in I think 1,250 high school football yeah. players makes it to the pros it's just and, like and, that and, yeah. and I think there's something like that there's a <laughs> scarcity of people that actually are going to get a business that has enough strategic defensibility that has the right profitability that can generate cash flow and grow mm -hmm. um, that it's going to get Wall Street's in, interest to go out and I think that people, I think, have a lot of attitudes that have come from watching the internet bubble in the late 90s. Yeah, it's certainly not them, 1999. Oh, well, that'll anymore. be a healthy market when anyone can go out, right? Yeah. And there's, uh, Michael Grimes on stage was talking about very strong correlation between the companies that are mm -hmm. getting out right now mm -hmm. and their profitability. I think of the, of the 25 or 30 this year, only three were, were not mm. profitable yeah. at the time of going out. And so part of what's going on is I think people are realizing that in order to be able to go public, you're going to have to deliver bottom line operating results, mm -hmm. which not everybody wants to do you know, yeah. at a particular stage in their company. And you said when a company is looking at deciding this year between an IPO or maybe getting acquired or something like yeah. that, the valuations for IPO are richer than acquisitions. I think you, over you think time, that's still I, true? I do. I, over time, I think you'll see, you know, the cyclical way where that will yeah. change. Yeah. In, for instance, in the... Um, in late and 07. that's probably tech specific because I know that in a lot of other markets, the IPO market is, is a bit difficult right now because there's still kind of a downturn. It's to arguable. Worry about. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the number of IPOs, is, as Michael mentioned, there have been 30 in mm -hmm. the first half of this yeah. year versus five in 08 and 12 yeah. in 09. So the trend's like this. So mm -hmm. it may be. What is the down rough size the of, the, of those IPOs? Um, they're the pretty similar to, to mm -hmm. most periods other than the internet uh -huh, bubble. So, of course. But you were hinting at something I think is really important, which is, you know, any, you, you just can't have this attitude that anyone can go public. And I don't know if we'll ever get back to that bubble mentality, right? Yeah. It's never going to be like that. And so everyone needs to kind of readjust in their, in their mind, you know, what, it, what a healthy IPO market means. If you look, if you ignore that period mm -hmm. of time, the number of uh, high-tech VC-backed IPOs is somewhere between 60 and 80. Okay. And so if, if, you know, if we end up, we've done 30 this year, if we end up doing 20 in Q4, you could be at 50. You're not wildly off of that median. Huh. Um, but once again, I think perceptions are set by the bubble. Yeah. Now, one of the final things I want to talk about is that during your discussion, you mentioned Facebook a few times, and you said yeah. they could pretty much go to cattle auction yeah. and they'll do well in an IPO. Yeah. So. Do you think that they should? I, I know you said you're, you're not, you know, their management. You yeah. can't really be in their perspective, but you would probably. Right? At what point would you IPO if you were that? Well, at some point, mm -hmm. I think they're going to be spending more dollars avoiding being public <laughs> than being public. Okay. Um, it's just going to be more of a hassle. You know, there are laws, actually, that if you get a certain number of shareholders, you're forced to file, mm -hmm. which is actually one of the things that brought Google public. Mm. Um, and so the, you know, the country, if there's enough shareholders, enough people involved, the government wants it to be managed in a way where there's protection for shareholders, which is what the IPO market's all about. Yeah. So I think that's the point in time, which almost regardless of what they think. But look, once again, I think it's really important to say Mark Zuckerberg has created an amazing company. He gets to do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't want to be public, he doesn't have to be public. Yeah. For some reckless gambling here, when do you think, what year do you think they're going to IPO? What should be their rough valuation? Well, yesterday, one of their board members said 012. And yeah. yesterday, someone said 33. I mean, there's trades taking place. So yeah. we, we know there's almost enough trades taking place you can trust the valuation of those trades. Going back to, to one of the things you brought up earlier on this um, IPO versus M&A, mm -hmm. in the late 07, there were a lot of billion dollar M&A. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're not seeing that. The multiples of the mm -hmm. big acquires yeah. are down, and you're seeing companies do really well 
uh, in the IPO market. And then another interesting thing is there's with data domain and arc site and three part, you've seen companies go public, establish a valuation, and then get an M and A premium on top of that. Okay. So even though they ended up selling. I think they were way better off having gone public prior to the sale to let the market establish a price and then get a premium. And one last thing most entrepreneurs probably don't know, when you do a public merger, there's no escrow. Yeah. And most private ones have 10 to 15% escrow. So that's even another part of the price that doesn't, you know, that's advantageous to the public set. Gotcha. Well, thanks so much. Really appreciate it, Bill. No problem. Once again, Good to see you. my guest today is in Bill Gurley of Benchmark Capital.